Hello everyone, my name is Benoit Kennard McDo for the win, and I solved the Chiliad. And the Chiliad is a very complicated thing, but I'm going to try and boil it down as fast as I can, as quickly as I can, to uh, prove a point and show you what I'm actually doing here. Okay, so the, the Chiliad is a three-dimensional polymath problem uh, and an electrical circuit diagram that you uh, you have to find your DC power supply and you have to move electricity from one end of this map to the other. And it is for a real life treasure of over $50 million. Um, and that might sound like a stretch of the imagination, but it is not. And uh, I'm gonna show you in as uh, little fashion as I can without giving the complete thing away here. So this is gonna be tricky, but bear with me. So there, I'm going to just have a couple of talking points, and I'm going to show you a couple of things, and then you guys can uh, make up your own mind, and I already did, and I promise you that I will be the one at the end of this uh, treasure map, uh, when the gates open, or when the tide rolls in, one or the other, I will be the one that cashes this thing in. So let's get into it. Um, this is RDR2, no big deal, right? Doesn't look like the Chiliad. And this doesn't look like the state of Kentucky. In fact, it would have to scream Texas over Kentucky, right? You have the Rio Grande instead of the San Luis. You have New Austin, Austin, Texas, Amadillo, desert, climate, culture, everything else. Screams not Kentucky, right? But it is Kentucky. And it is uh, the Chiliad. And they're one and the same. So I'm going to pull the book up. The book goes here. Yeah, you'll get a view of the uh, little guy on there. This little guy has a name, and this little guy has a bunch of variables around him that uh, uh, represent the Chiliad and what it is. You see, there's like three. There's the Chiliad. There's New Austin. There's Kentucky. And uh, this is a number two. This is a catfish. This is a blue guy. This is VR. This is a, just a military reference. This is... Uh, an egg, this is a light bulb, this is a three-dimensional polymath problem, and it is the Philosopher's Stone, and it is the Hauser's Legacy that I'm actually holding in uh, my hands here. So uh, before I go into that, I'm going to show you one thing that kind of uh, takes me being held in court as far as uh, an insane person would have to uh, uh, be laid to rest as as far as I'm not crazy. So um, what I'm showing you here is just the everyday scene, right, of, of uh, RDR2, and I'm a bald guy on purpose here for a good reason. But I'm going to sit right there for a second and let that soak into Dan and Sam Hauser and how much I've actually figured this out. So what does that say on the ground? Probably nothing, right? Probably nothing. I'm going to pull up the map. This is called topography. Topography indicates the lands surveyed previously, probably, I would hope it was previously surveyed, and it shows depth and uh, perception, and it so shows a lot of different things, but what it also shows is two secrets that the Hausers hit, and one is the east side and the west side out-of-bounds areas of this map, so this is one jump point, and what you have to do is you have to get drunk, and this is in uh, multiplayer, uh, and uh, you have to do this in single player, okay? So what you do is you get you get drunk, you get hammered drunk, and uh, excuse me, I'm on Xbox here, not PlayStation. PlayStation is far superior console. So you get drunk, and when you get drunk, you have to jump. As soon as you know you're gonna black out, you hit that water, and uh, and then you end up. Let me pull it up. Over here, okay? And then you can navigate this landscape it is a pain in the ass there are boats there are all sorts of things on this side and one of the things that they hit on this side is a problem and you have to solve the problem and you have to start uh, moving electricity one side of the map to the other all the way down and this is uh, this is the proof and I'm not gonna get into all this and this is how I'm gonna save some time back Back on the screen, Dad. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom out, go right back to the screen where I was at, right, right here. 
Doesn't look like the Chiliad, right? Doesn't look like the state of Kentucky, right? Nope. Okay, well, I think that it is. Actually, I know that it is. So we're going to look at this. And normally it'd be up here. It's a little out of, out of whack. Let me just paint it in crayon for you. I'll zoom way out to where you can see it. Okay. Now, can you see that? Can you see that? Do you see now? Okay. This is that map. Okay. Green represents RDR2. Green, RDR2. Red equals Chiliad. Pink equals variables in the value and blue value of Kentucky, right? You don't see a whole lot of blue on here except for one area down here, and I can't imagine why, but each one of these colors represent uh, the, the, the essence of what this is. And not only is it uh, the two biggest gaming developers in the world that are worth millions and millions of dollars, but they are juggernauts of their industry on which they dominate. And uh, they... Uh, they have sold more of one electronic uh, than any other human beings on earth. Uh, they're both Rhodes Scholars. They went to Oxford. They went to Cambridge. Um, these are not stupid people. In fact, they're probably the two smartest brothers on the face of the earth. And uh, they hit a three-dimensional polymath problem instead of a video game, right? Okay, so a uh, couple of things here, too, on the blue. These are numbers, and these are representing uh, different values around a certain areas here. And the pink and everything else... They all have their things. See, read, see, not that hard. Okay, and these are values, and that is interesting on why there are so many right here. Okay, so we're gonna go into that, Dad, on the book. Okay, so we're gonna get into this just slightly. Okay, zoom in and out, and I'm uh, um, I'm talking about a math problem, and it's not just a math problem, but it is a polymath problem. Can you find me? That's very interesting. We're gonna go back to that. Uh, very soon but can you find me is very important here but I'm just gonna flip through and uh, take to interactive four millimeter games not associated with Rockstar but Gary Foreman and Jamie King are uh, if you read here you have Red Dead Redemption uh, or Red Dead by Jack Marston uh, Malcolm Eggs these boys uh, are, are, are hid a the biggest um, uh, Easter egg of all time and I figured it out so that's why I'm so adamant on all this and I'm actually uh, uh, putting this up for sale and I'll show you why here in a minute but so it just goes on and on here's the explanation of what the Chiliad is okay and it just goes on this is all research okay this is Zelda this is um, this is math that you can figure out uh, based on stuff that was left in the game polymath in general and their polymath uh, connections of uh, Renaissance thinkers and stuff are evident across this whole thing. And a lot of them went to Cambridge and they went to Oxford. Weird. And, um, and it goes on with Kevin, uh, nope, nope, that's Francis Bacon, not Kevin Bacon. Distant relative. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I can't imagine why. Vanity, all is vanity. These are the codes in the game that just uh, are all Renaissance thinkers and Renaissance things. This is a... Uh, a uh, Renaissance painting of King Solomon. King Solomon is very important. Walter, Walter Scott, um, uh, William Faulkner uh, is went to Oxford as well. Writing on the wall, the graffiti, um, the entire uh, the entire thing hidden in plain view, and uh, writing is on the wall. And what it spells is is all these different critical thinkers. This is a fun one. Uh, this is Kentucky Bourbon, right? But Jefferson Hitchens. Jefferson Hitchens went to Oxford. He was uh, Thomas Jefferson's biographer. Weird. Uh, why would that be in the game? I don't know. I'll let you uh, decide for yourselves. Okay, so this goes on. Thomas Jefferson, big influence in, uh, um, in all that, in Kentucky especially. But the uh, what it doesn't, Kentucky has nothing to do with Tunguska in Siberia or Tesla or the third meteorite that's hidden in the game, but they absolutely are connected, and they're connected by math. They're connected by um, uh, electricity. They're connected by a chef. And if you look at this, it says USA Map Chef and GTA 5 tires underwater. What are the odds you think a chef, an actual chef, I was a, a, a professional chef for a long, long time, on the Michelin uh, standard or level, um, so I'm not just a uh, everyday goon here, okay? But look at that. Isn't that weird? It's like Kentucky and winter, winter chicken dinner, right? And remember that here. Dad, back up to the uh, back up to the screen. I'll pull this down for just a second. Look at this. 
howdy doody looking fella right here. I wonder what he's looking at. Well, he's not looking at anything, but what he is looking at is a plate of chicken. Okay, and this is an alternate perspective of the USA Map Shop and Michelin tires, and it started as a trucking company, and that's it. That's it's as simple as that. You just got to make the three connections all the way down and that's just one of many so this is going to get blatant and obvious i'm going to just keep flipping here i'm going to keep flipping king solomon ark of the covenant um the uh, ark of the digital covenant let me uh um reiterate here um and there are pictures of them in the game the west side jump out of bounds point that's important here uh to to see what the chili ad is and these are all just talking points that i had on here but uh, mark twain jeremy gill otis miller huckleberry finn Okay, um, you'll start to see the connections and what the connections are between giant catfish and DC power supplies and dual chimneys and Thomas Edison, if you look here, is, is treasure. If you make the connections right, and it's not just like I just made these things up. These things all have, if you've ever read Huckleberry Finn, and you have all read uh, stories that should be obvious on, on this. Uh, King Solomon was only famous for a couple of things. One was being the richest man on earth, and the other was having the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, uh, This thing is also a recipe, a recipe for gold in general. And we're going to go back to the gold. We're going to keep moving on here. This is also about duality and strawberries and uh, the uh, 25th Infantry Division. Um, th these are all just cross-references. Uh, chickens and El Electron and Greek gods and... Uh, and oh yeah, Gavin, nobody can find Gavin. Guess what? I found him. Oxford teaches there, teaches at Cambridge too. Have you found Gavin? Yes, I have. He teaches Hindu culture. What would Hindu culture have to do with this game? Well, quite a bit. This is Helios. This is the sun worshiper that worships Helios. Okay. This is Indra. Indra has a trident. Indra is the main focus or main god of the Hindu culture. He's also blue or gold or there's blue people in Kentucky as well. And here's a picture of them on the Strawberry Hotel. That's right in the Strawberry Hotel. You can find them, okay? So you have Gavin, right? You have Gavin, you have Oxford, you have Hindu studies, and then you have the biggest Hindu of them all, and then you have a picture of him in the game. Weird. Okay, I'm going to skip by Atlantis and Edgar Casey and uh, a couple other things here. This I'm redacting for my own reasons. Okay, but if you focus in on that map, you see that? That looks like the RDR2 map and a couple other maps that we... But I'm not going to get into that because that is some kooky stuff. But there is uh, evidence of, you know, pyramids and, uh, like, on the front and sunken treasure or sunken cities and uh, New Madrid right around the same area. Okay, and moving on. Ready Player One, okay. Uh, it was written by Ernest Cline. It was a movie by Steven Spielberg. And uh, it was all about two gaming developers that hit a massive fortune inside of a video game. So this is nothing new, okay? This spells Chiliad, okay? Let's flip that around. That says Chiliad right there, outside, out of bounds, west side, okay? Uh, we have Art and Tapestries. Now, this one's going to be fun. I really like this one. Uh, this is a lot of fun. So we're going to go through these. I'm going to flip through these. Okay, what is that? Is that like Illinois or something? Missouri, Tennessee, West Virginia, and Kentucky, the egg of Kentucky. Weird that I would find this inside the game, along with all sorts of other indications uh, through the art and topography and, uh, and everything else that it just all... Oh, is that Red Harlow? Yes. Is that the princess? No. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, sign you find in game. It's, a, it's actually a, a uh, address, 44 uh, Grand Prix. Um, that's weird that it's Millionaire's Lane, Kentucky, uh, in, uh, for the Kentucky Derby. Why would they have this in the game? Why is there constant uh, duality and uh, one, two, and three uh, as far as a centralized location that points you all down the same path, no matter how you look at it, it all leads you, what is that? Duality. It's up and down. It's the same thing. It's a mirrored perspective. It is the Chiliad, Okay. This is also about uh, uh, moving electricity and everything else. It's just a treasure hunt. It's a treasure map, and it just goes on and 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 on 
and on and on and on and on. Oh yeah, and they left the keyhole uh, on that on that one part of the mat. So we're gonna get these out of the way here. We're gonna keep flipping through this thing. Okay, more on the duality. There's giant people from Kentucky. There are also giant bones found in the game. Weird. Okay, and we also have the panoramic map view. I'm not gonna get into that a whole lot, but I will if you guys ask. Um, but the panoramic uh, map in the, found in the game was actually a mis, uh, misinformation and you're given the wrong information. So this is a panoramic view of the area of Kentucky. So I'm gonna flip, keep flipping here. It's weird too, like even, even in, the, uh, in that uh, Francis Sinclair stuff, it kind of all tells the same story. And what that story is, is that uh, there's an area of uh, Kentucky that just so happens to have a couple of weird things going on about it okay more on the Kentucky okay, have you found the missing princess nobody has oh weird <clears throat> except it's cafe Kentucky in Luxembourg uh, and then in here with that Zelda thing there's a shark found and uh, and it is in the same island on which the brothers uh, left a perfect map uh, of, uh, of, of Kentucky. They left it right in plain view for everyone to see. They didn't hide this from anybody. Anyway, going back. Okay, I'm not going to say the name of the club, okay, but there is a club uh, in Kentucky that just so happens to be sponsored by two of the biggest investment corporation banks in the world, and, uh, and it, it, they can't produce a deer, but what they have is, uh, is a strip of land that uh, just so happened to draw my attention randomly. It's just totally random. I just stumbled into a wild patch of gold. Anyway, so it goes on. Here's some plat books from the area, and this one's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, these are the three maps, just like the ones up there, that are all together. Okay, you see that? You see these different layers in the topography? Almost like they wanted you to stack them together or something. And here they are, stacked together. Okay, here's the Chiliad. Okay, there's an egg, right? And these are different variables. Like I said, we're just we're gonna skip right over this and we're just gonna keep going, okay? But when you put the X over Kentucky and you can put it over the same map on RDR2, you start seeing some very similar things. One is, is that the X lines up perfectly with Oddsville, Kentucky, which also perfectly lines up with Odds Fellow Rest. Okay? Oh, wait, I got these highlighted. I wonder what that says. New AU. AU stands for gold, right? Gold, okay, you see that? AU, but it's not on the other side of Kentucky, okay? And and it's just that simple. These And there's the USA map, Chef. Other perspective, here's the keyhole, the sea of the crown, the catfish. Uh, it goes on and on and on. And, and like I said, this is still a race. I still didn't take this home, at least um, enough that I'm going to be uh, talking about here. So what I'm going to be doing is selling this uh, at auction. And I'm gonna sell my information on this because I've been to this area, that club that I'm not going to get very uh, specific about, but there is a arrow and a trident and a tomahawk. And it is kind of like a egg. And it is kind of like a light bulb. And it is kind of right by Marston, Missouri. And it is kind of like by Cairo, Illinois, which is also one of the major places that you start in Huckleberry Finn. Jeremy Gill, you guys get the picture? This is ridiculous. This is the most blatantly obvious thing, and it gets better. Not only did they do that, but you actually have the light bulb and all that in a visual representation, because I drew it in crayon, but there is an island in the game that perfectly matches it as well. And if you read this in Spanish, and you go around here, it all leads to here, dad on the map, up on top. You see these? These are variables, values, okay? This is a math problem. This might look like cartoon bullshit to you guys, but it's not. This is a very, very elaborate map that these guys hid inside of a game, and they know that I know uh, all about it, okay? So me and the Housers are very familiar. Dad, focus in on that. What does that say on, the, on that right there? What does that say? Right, bottom paragraph. I'll, I'll read it. It says, uh, hmm, it says, New York is going to be run by nasty folks who exploit the poor. You're going to need a team of horses to pull all that gold out of there. This is what 50 to to $100 million worth, 
looks like in gold based on the prices. And this is McDoo for the win. Legs feed the wolf, boys. Sam and Dan, you boys need to answer to this. This game is over. And I'm going to show you that it's over. Dad, focus on the painting, okay? This is my representation of their representation of the Chiliad. Okay, I figured this out. It's mine for the taking. So I'm going to pull this down real quick, Dad, and this is going to be the end of the video. I'm going to pull this down, set it right here, okay? And I'm going to set this guy right here, okay? And like I said, this guy has a name. I'm not going to get into that too much, but there is a picture of this. There is a picture of that, and two guys in the world know that I'm not crazy, and they just so happen to be the smartest brothers on the face of the earth. I figured this out. It belongs to me. But this is fun, okay? So they recycled gold, right? But there's one thing missing, right, when you look at this. But, me too. Why doesn't the Kentucky map match? There's something missing. It sure is something missing. And I'm glad you brought that up. Because this is not only a map of Kentucky, but there's a big chunk gas missing out of it. You can't, how can you say that this is the chili yet? But the eggs line up when you have it like this. I guess I was wrong. I was guessing that there's nothing here, right? Or was there? And these little squares are part of the Chiliad, but there are squares on this kind of a road map that would indicate that it is not complete. So there is a completed Chiliad map that is outside of the realm of just being, look at it and figure it out. Okay, that's what it normally looks like with the minus of this and uh, uh, this uh, company up here, or I mean area, uh, Louisville. And, and it would just so happen to be that it was incomplete. So this is the complete map and all these little lines are variables that go down the way. And how would I know that they recycled it themselves? Because it is possible that they recycled it themselves. This is the most elaborate, surreal experience of my life. And I figured this out and this is going to pay me out. So I'm doing the reverse art heist here and I'm selling it. I'm selling the whole thing, the whole package. And, uh, and I'm going to put it on the lowest bid. The lowest I will take for this is $7.5 million. And that is it. That is the end. I won't take any less than that. This is fortune beyond wildest imaginations. And this is something that was, I, I just can't believe um, I, I figured out. So this is going to lead to three theories, right? Okay. One, theory A. I have three theories that are, are value. There are two treasures, okay? Uh, one is for the DLC at the, at the club uh, for 2020, based on moving electricity and on an online gauntlet, which they already have a, uh, uh, an app for that nobody uh, realized it had a value after they released it um, when the game was already almost, everyone had already almost beaten it. Two, Chiliad. They used one to hide the other, and how could they keep this from all of their staff without anybody knowing uh, and they use one they use one to hide the other. The theory B that they're one and the same and then the DLC was here the whole time and the 100% completion uh, is part of that and uh, and the reason why I would believe it's here the whole time uh, and that they left a uh, uh, a combination for the door and they used a DLC to cover all people uh, in their workforce and other people are stupid and nobody noticed. And I'm going to go to that before I go to theory C here. Now, Dad, zoom in on this, okay? So, weird that this is round like an egg or Kentucky, and you have also a smoking barrel that would have to lead right over the top of where all these other valuables keep uh, winding themselves up at, okay? And you have a that, but that's not the interesting part. So, before you even... Turn this game on, you see a little book here. And what does that say? It says, C A N can U Y O U F, white F in the shoulder, find me. Okay? Why would they have that for the first thing you see 
when you turn on the game. Okay? Or don't even turn it on before you even get it. It's theory C. I didn't do it right. I didn't find something. There's something maybe that's in Oddsville. And I just, I'm out of money. I'm out of resources. And, uh, and I didn't do, do it right. And so if I didn't say the right things or whatever, is starting in Oddsville and working their way down, I just don't know. Um, and I'm not, I went straight for the end zone and, uh, and I know it's there. So the, uh, this is all irrelevant to me and I don't care, but this would have to be a very valuable piece of work as far as if you had to make a completion, uh, down the line in the real world. Okay. And, uh, either way I win and that's it. I would love if somebody pulled this gold out of Kentucky and, uh, it would, you'd be my best friend and you would secure my legacy forever. And so, last thing I'm going to say, okay, the variables and the thing and the thing and the thing, okay, is there is gold in Kentucky, okay? And uh, this pack of cards has 52 decks, uh, 52 cards in the deck. And uh, I took a couple of jokers out of there, okay? I'm going to shuffle these and play a quick game here, okay? Whoops, whoops, play a quick game. You ready for the game? The game is called uh, each one of these represents a value. Okay, 52 cards in the deck. I took two out. Here's Kentucky. Uh, here's the game. 52 cards, $50 million. I took two out. That's the end of the day. That's the end of it. Make two for the win. Thank you very much. End it.